What is up everybody? It's your boy, Captain Jack Spiro. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also give this video a thumbs up. Today, we have kind of a little special surprise for you. We are diving with AVP Pro, Ryan Doherty, over in the corner. His girlfriend, Aubrey. These guys came here all the way from Hermosa Beach, California. Ryan hit me up on Instagram and we just kind of talked back and forth a little bit. Said he was going to come over and do a trip and I offered to take him out on the boat. I think they brought the cold weather because it is pretty chilly. We're going to have to layer up our wetsuits and try to stay warm. They said the cold weather hasn't even... They said this is great. They're used to dive in that uh, 58 degree water. And this is 78 maybe? <laughs> Yeah, so you guys might be bo boiling in your uh, five mils. Everybody knows Spencer, homeless man. He lives on this boat. We got my sister, my dad running a point on the boat. And we're going to do a little bit of fishing, mostly diving, and hopefully we get into something good. It's a little cloudy today. We're going to dive between 60 and, well, 60 plus feet. We're going for pelagics, maybe some grouper, snapper, but we'll see what's, uh, see what's around once we get down below. So I get in, start chumming, and I get a nice little visit right off the bat. That's about a six foot lemon shark. He doesn't really seem to be leaving us alone, but he's not too bad as long as you keep a good eye on him. And I can't stop chumming because all these speedos that showed up are eating the chum and they work as an excellent fish attracting device. There's nothing better than having a live flasher all around you so big wahoo and other pelagics come in. So we had no luck on the reef, and when something's not really working out, don't be afraid to change. So we decided to go in a little bit of deeper water. I'm making a drop on a wreck. This is my first drop on the wreck, and I see out in the distance some big amberjacks. I kind of line up on one of them, but he's a little bit too big. I want a perfect size one, maybe a 30 pounder for the smoker, and I picked him out. Fortunately, I didn't stone him, but I was still able to get a really good holding shot, which enabled me to horse him up to the surface. I know there were sharks around as long as I can maintain control of the fish, get him to the surface quickly. I don't really have to worry about sharks too much, especially when we have a couple divers in the water to keep an eye out on one another. This fish came up a lot easier than I thought he would, and it seems like he's just kind of regular swimming. And when they're doing that, there's no need to really horse him up that fast, because he's coming up regardless, and you don't want him to take a bad run and dart back down to where sharks may be lurking. Oh god! <laughs> Woo! You need a big, a big boost. Nice. I shot the small one. Just cuz. Fuck it, right? Dude. I shot, yeah. There was there was one that was double its size. Well, there were like three that were double its size, but I opted out. Shortly after putting that amberjack in the boat, about a 50 pound wahoo came cruising in. He's just on the other side of Spencer there. He came in on the flasher. Spencer takes his shot. When something like this happens, try not to get too upset because it is what it is. That was a good one. Did you see that wahoo? 
There is a beautiful walk. He shot and missed, but it was far. Nothing more else to do but to just get back to chumming. I noticed Spencer shoots off down at about 80 feet. I make a drop and I saw right there his gun took off out in the distance. He hooked up his belt reel, so whatever it was must have spooled his gun really quick, so he hooked up to his belt, giving him about 300 feet of line for whatever he shot to run. Yo, what is it? When you get a good fish like this, it's really important to communicate with the boat, which you see me do right here. Yeah, he keeps, keeps going with it. Hey, 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 grab the flashers and follow us. These kingfish are a part of the mackerel family and their skin is really tough, just like wahoo, just like ciros. They have a tendency to rip out shafts all the time. The best advice I would say is let the fish run and that's exactly what Spencer does. Some people might not like the fact that we use reels as opposed to float lines with buoys. The reason is because the conditions that we usually dive, the current is ripping, we usually do deep dives, and that creates a lot of drag on the float line. So we usually stick with reels because it's what we're used to and we are prepared to handle that situation. If we shoot a big fish, we're prepared and know how to land it. If you're an unexperienced diver, I highly suggest do not use a belt rail. Just go ahead and stick to float lines and buoy. So without even saying anything, Spencer already knew that he was in charge of line management detail. I was in charge of pulling the fish in as well as I could without letting anything rip out. And that freed up Audrey to do the backup shot. Once you get that backup shot in the fish, it's pretty much done and the fish is yours. Even though the fish looks dead, I still am going to brain him just in case he has a little spark of life and tries to dart out. Better to be safe than sorry. his gun reel, Aussie reel, and then his belt reel. <laughs> Double, spooled. Double spooled. That was crazy, but we couldn't put any pressure on him because, uh, yeah, we, he, I know he was holding on by a thread. That's so. why I opened it up and like, it was so loose. For sure. That first run was so hard. Yeah, absolutely. I knew the shot wasn't great. Yeah, and then Audrey got the, got the kill shot. Yeah. yeah. That's sweet. Hell yeah. You guys see that walk? Got that meat. Oh, oh and then we miss a wahoo. Oh. oh. All right, so we got some good fish. We're gonna hit a couple more spots before we head in. Hopefully, we get some more. They are so pretty. Oh yeah. We got a shot that time. After spin shot that mutton, that got me all fired up. I wanted some snapper for dinner. I wanted to show these West Coasters what a true mutton snapper 
filet tastes like, so I got to get them a fish. We had a little bit of chum in the water. I go down, we see some structure. It's about 100 feet to the bottom, and I see in the distance a small mutton. I see out in the distance there a small mutton and with that small mutton a bigger mutton came in kind of fighting over it for this chum that one from the left kind of came in and scared that little one away and i take kind of a pretty long shot on this guy i don't like taking long shots like this but he kind of started swimming away i knew i had to take the shot started heading to the surface i know the shot wasn't great but this is why we buddy dive people You'll see as I'm coming up, Spencer's going down. He takes a look at the fish, sees that it's a shot in the fish, but it's not a great holding shot, and he'd rather shoot the fish than lose it. You'll see when I get this thing to the surface how close this was to ripping out. I shot was hanging on by a thread. <laughs> really close. And here's a little pro tip. I say everybody should get a little carabiner on their belt. I hook up my gun to it. When I shoot a fish, I can hook up my spear to it. Highly recommended. Good, good eating size. Definitely legal. All right, so we are cold. Cold spins. It's chilly. We're done for the day. We, uh, we can't take any more. The sun was like not out at all, hardly at all throughout the day. It's a bummer. Spence uh, missed that wahoo, but he had uh, redemption on the poor man's wahoo. Got that kingfish. Got a nice AJ. Got a couple stud muttons. Yeah, we got, uh, we're bringing home some meat, so we are pretty stoked about it. And it was pretty awesome. Audrey got that backup shot on that nice king. So it was cool having them uh, dive this area. They're, they're used to diving the kelp beds and in like shallower water. So this was like totally different from what they were used to. Uh, but it's really cool that they got to experience it. Kind of get a different outlook on oh, the way we dive over here. But we are going to punch back in and I'll show you the fish once we get in shore. Paige is hooked up. What you got? What you got? It doesn't feel that big. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shut up. Another, Another oh, mango. 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 Nice. Mangeko. Mangeko. <laughs> pretty boy, pretty boy. Oxygen deprivation. Hey, Spanish, idiot! Okay, you guys, we're back in my house. What an epic day. We dropped everybody off. Everybody had an awesome time. We got in the meat, so we're gonna go home, cook it up, finish cleaning up the boat here. But thank you guys for joining me. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it that thumbs up. If you are new, subscribe. I love making videos like this for you. Bring you on my adventures, learn from our mistakes. Like always, guys, thanks again, and I will see you next week for another adventure. Later.
Is that the Billy Moore? <laughs> Funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> babe, babe, I got him, I got him.